Welcome to Get the Dirt at your library. Did you know the library is full of dirt? Join us this summer as we get the dirt, discovering interesting reading trails. There will be trails about pets, music, dirt diggers, and more. Today's dirt is about pets. But before we read about pets, let's start with a silly story about a fish. This book is the Pow Pow Fish in the Big Big Dark. A dozy, a doozy of a drowsy made Mrs. Clam yawn. Then the big current whooshed out her pearl. Was gone. Mr. Fish swam forth. Mr. Clam, don't weep. I will find your pearl. That's a promise I'll keep. He swooped through the water, swishing so close to the sand. And he eyed every inch of the busy bottom land. He found a mucky marble where he thought the pearl might be. And then a hidden voice whispered, it's further out in the sea. So he swam a little deeper where the light grew dimmer, and his heart fl fluttered. Mr. Fish grew grimmer. I'm as fast as a selfish, I'm as strong as a shark, I'm as smart as a dolphin, but I'm scared of the dark. He kept searching all along the ocean floor, through a reef, through a wreck, swimming far off from the shore. Mr. Fish Throw a pout pout pope. Drawn as hope. And then the whisper from before said, It's down beyond the slope. So he swam a little deeper, with the light grew dimmer, and his heart heart flip fluttered, Mr. Fish grew grimmer. I'm as fast as a selfish, I'm as strong as a shark. I'm as smart as a dolphin, but I'm scared of the dark. A whirl of wiggly worms made his search team swirl. And helped with the hunt for the yawn gone pearl. But nothing was discovered. Mr. Fish felt despair. And then that soft voice whispered, In the trench, check there. So he swam a little deeper, where the light grew dimmer. And his heart flit fluttered. Mr. Fish grew grimmer. I'm as fast as a selfish, I'm as strong as a shark. I'm as smart as a dolphin, but I'm scared of the dark. I won't keep swimming in this. Heap, deep, black. I know I made a promise, but this fish is heading back. Then I whisper now familiar, whisk away his dread. You can do it, Mr. Fish, her sweet voice said. Though there wasn't any light, but the smallest, slim glimmer, Mr. Fish felt braver. Cheered on by Mrs. Sh by Miss Shimmer. Two are faster than a sailfish. Two are stronger than a shark. Two are smarter than a dolphin. Two are bigger than the dark. So they swam down together, holding fin to fin, when suddenly, amazingly, light shone in. Mr. Fish said, yes, Miss Fimmer shouted, yay. There's Miss Clam's pearl. Hooray, hooray. They smooched Mr. Lantern. They smiled as they swam, weaving back through the water to a happy Mrs. Clam. The whole gang gathered, feeling glorious and proud, and they swam in a circle. They sang out loud. The ocean is wide and the ocean is deep, but friends help friends. It's a promise we keep. We're bigger, is bigger, always big, bigger than the dark. I've, I've quite a few pets that I've rescued over the years since I travel a lot. I had to find pets that were self-sustaining. That means I needed pets. I could be left alone a few days as long as I made sure they had plenty of food and water. I did lots of research so that when pets came my way, I was ready. Or so I thought. Before I introduce today's pet, let's read a book about two children who had a hard time deciding what pet they should get. The book is called, What Pet Should I Get? The author, the one who wrote the words, and the illustrator, the one who drew the pictures, are the same person in this book. His name is Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is a pen name. He used a pen name instead of his real name, Theodore Seuss Giesel. What pet should I get? We want a pet. We want a pet. What kind of pet should we get? Dad said we could have one. Dad said he would pay. I went to the pet shop. I went there with Kay. And so we went in. I took one fast look. I saw a fine dog. Who's your cans? 
so I shook. So I said to him, I want him. But then Kay saw a cat. She gave it a pat, and she said, I want that. Then Kay said, Now what do you think we should do? Dad said to pick one. We cannot take home two. Then what do you know? We saw two other kinds. Now how could Kay and I make up our minds? A pup and a kitten, they looked like good fun. Now which would we pick? We could only pick one. The cat or the dog, the kitten, the pup. Oh boy, this is something to make a mind up. Make up your mind. Then I looked all around. I saw something with the wings. I said, look at him. We can pick one that sings. But then, look over there, said my sister Kay. We can go home with a rabbit today. Then I looked at Kay and said, what will we do? I like all the pets that I've seen. So do you. We have to pick one pet and pick it out soon. You know, Mother told us to be back by noon. And I could have done it. I could have, I bet. I could have said what pet we should get. But, you know what Kay did? Do you know what she did? She said, fish, 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 fish. It may be a fish. It's the pet that we wish. And then, I saw a new kind. And they were good too. How could I pick just one? Now, what should we do? You could only pick one. That's what my dad said. But now how could I make up my mind, that mind in my head? Pick a pet fast. Pick one out soon. Mother and dad said be, to be home by noon. Make up your mind. Time, baby, now to make up my mind. But who knows what other good pets I might find. I might find a new one. A fast kind of thing. Who would fly around my head in a ring. On a string. Yes, that would be fun. But our house is so small. This thing on a string would bump bump into the wall. My mother, I know, would not like that at all. So maybe some other good kind of pet. Another kind, maybe, is what we should get. We might find a new kind. A pet who is tall. A tall pet who fits in a space that is small. My mother might like this pet best of them all. If we had a big tent, we would be able to take home a yent. Dad would like us to have a good yent, but how do I know he would pay for a tent? You see how it is when you pick up a pet? How can you make up your mind what to get? But what if we took one of each kind of pet? Then our house would be full of the pets we would get. No, Dad would be mad. We can only have one. We do not. If we do not choose, we will end up with none. I would do it. I would do it. I will do it right now. I will make up my mind that is in my head. The dog or the rabbit. The fish or the cat. I picked one out fast. And then that was that. Even though we don't know precisely what pet they chose, by looking at the clues, what do you think they chose? Did you know Dr. Seuss's first pet was a brown stuffed Toy dog? Do you have a dog? Is it a toy dog like Dr. Seuss's? Well, my guest pet isn't a dog. In fact, my guest pet has no fur, nor does it have any legs. But it does have a tail. Do you have a guess? Yes, it's a fish. How do we know it's a fish? Well, let's look. It has gills for swimming. It has fins. And it is always in the water. It's lived its whole life in the water. It has a black stripe running down its side and spots all over. This is Joel. I got her from a friend. I named her after a unicorn from the Narnia book series. To find out more about the unicorn named Joel, check out the book The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. This book can be found in the library by going to the fiction section, and fiction books are listed by the first three letters of the author's last name. If you look on the edge, there's a J for juvenile and then an L-E-W for Lewis. To find out what kind of fish Jewel was, I dig deeper at the library and found some great nonfiction books about fish. The book Fish by Angela Beck was the one I found the simplest to use in identifying Jewel. I like the way this book laid out the types of freshwater aquarium fish that you can narrow down the clues further by saying the types within their categories. Now, to find what type of fish Jewel is, 
there's the tetras. And these are all the tetras. So let's look at Jewel. Jewel has a sort of oval-shaped body and two whiskers coming out of her chin. I don't see any whiskers on the tetras. So I don't think she's a tetra. And here are more tetras. I don't think she's any of them. None of them have spots. Maybe she's a carp. Um, I don't see any carp with a body that's an oval shape. Because these are more circle shaped. Here's more carp. She, she decided she wasn't a carp already. Maybe she's a catfish. We know catfish have whiskery things coming out of their chins. Um, but I don't really see any catfish that look like her. She definitely doesn't look like that. Maybe she's a labyrinth fish. I know she doesn't look like a Siamese fighting fish. She looks a lot like this one. It's a dwarf gumari. Let's see if there's any more. I think I found her. Do you think she's a pearl gumari? They have an oval-shaped, oval-shaped body, lots of spots, a black stripe going down her side. I think she's a pearl gumari. And now, to double check, to make sure that she is a pearl gumari, I'm going to look in this book and see if she's one in this book also. So, if I flip into the... Grunami section. Here's all of the fish. Um, do you see any ones with spots? See, I don't see a lot that look like her. Do you see any in this page? Oh, there she is. Oval shaped body with long whiskers, stripe running through her eye and down her back, an orange reddish tint on her chin. It says that pearl granamis are found in Malaysia. So, let's go over here to the globe and see we are right up here in Minnesota. And if you go all the way around the world to Asia, we still can't get to Malaysia because we have to go way down south near the equator. You see, we were, f we were a long ways from the equator. Malaysia is a lot closer. So that means Jewel is used to living in very, very warm water. And since she's a freshwater fish, she would live in the lakes, not the ocean. Let's read one last nonfiction book about fish, and you decide if the fish is the right pet for you. The, book's, the book is Fish by Julie Murray. The non-fiction books on fish can be found in the 639 section of the library. Did you know? So this is fish. What kind of fish do you think this is? I think it might be a Siamese fighting fish like we saw earlier in the book. And see, these non-fiction books the illustrations are actually um, photos, so there isn't an illustrator in these books. There's a table of contents where you can find everything that you need to know in this book. Fish. Fish make great family pets. Fish come in many colors. Some are bright, some have stripes. I can see that these have bright stripes. What's your favorite stripe? I think mine's the green one. Some fish are small. They can live in a fish bowl. Now see, Jewel is in a little uh, little jug right now. Usually she doesn't live there. Usually she lives in a big tank. Because some fish are big. They need to live in a fish tank. Add plants and rocks to the tank. These give the fish places to hide. Tanks need to be able to keep clean. Ellie cleans her fish tank. You see this thing that she's using? 
There's a magnet on both sides with some cloth in the middle. And then you rub it across the fish tank and it cleans the fish tank for you. Fish need to be fed food every day. Peter feeds his fish. Fish are fun pets to watch. They swim all day long. You think you'd get tired if you swam all day long? I know I would. Is a fish the right pet for your family? See, these are all the types, these are many different types of fish. To have a fish, you're going to need a fish bowl, something for the fish to hide in, food, you need, you're definitely going to need food, and then some plants for your fish to play with. Did you know that you can get paid for to, to take care of fish? In this one, Animal Helpers Aquariums. Let's look at it. You won't need a snorkel and mask here at the aquarium. You can trek through millions of gallons of fresh and salt water, but you won't get wet. Walk rather than swim by amazing aquatic creatures in tanks and exhibits. Visit animals born at the aquarium, like this penguin and this little fish. See, see mammals like these sea otters and the sea lion. Learn about reptiles like the sea turtle, who was rescued in the wild. Lots of people work in aquariums, such as aquarists, biologists, curators, and volunteers. They care, for, they care for creatures found all over the world, from those that swim near the tops of the lakes to those that dive down into the ocean's depths. At the aquarium, you can get a close-up look at animals and underwater plants. Some of these you may have only read or heard about, like this exotic seahorse and these jellyfish. Aquariums hold saltwater and freshwater animals. This hammerhead shark, tiny octopus, and enormous manta ray come from the salty ocean. These fish come from freshwater rivers and lakes. See, Jewel is also a freshwater fish, so she wouldn't be found in the ocean. An aquarium, you can see huge fin fish and very tiny fish. Look how big that fish is. You can find cold weather animals and warm weather fish. See, Jewel is a warm weather fish because she, she lives near the equator. Aquarium staff may research little known species like this beluga whale and this whale shark. They also work with kids to conserve a species at risk, like this white surgeon. Aquarium workers help us learn more about animals, where they live, the wild, and how we can help them. Would you like to work in an aquarium? Look how many fish there are. Could you transport whale sharks, work in a water quality lab, or feed sea, do feed sea otters? Look at that thing. I need a crane to haul this one fish. Look at that. Would you like to teach a sea lion? Could you train river otters and dolphins? If you worked in an aquarium, you might save an otter. Treat a sick eel? Or listen to a newborn penguin's heartbeat? Could you release a cured sea turtle back into the ocean? Would you research sharks and help the alligators? Look at this alligator. It's albino, which means it's all white. Would you like to work in an aquarium? Get to know these animals now? Participate in citizen science pro programs? Volunteer? Become a junior keeper? Your experience and work with professionals will help you decide which animal helper is job is best for you. Thanks for watching the first episode of Get the Dirt. Tomorrow on Dirt, we'll be doing a segment on Digging Deeper, the theme for our, this summer's library reading program. Then be sure to tune in next week for a pet from the mammal family. Have a great day, and be sure to get the dirt at your local library.